it's way past time I dispense some indiscriminate justice! G'day ladies and gentlemen, Duckville here. We're going to be having a look at a replay of the Korean ladder today. This is going to be between a uh, Zerg and another Zerg, of course. This is Promise over here. Have done a replay of Promise before and up the top right of the Zelnaga Caverns, we've got our Blue Zerg, I am Nesty. That is indeed Nesty, the uh, player who's uh, obviously taken a championship in the GSL, has uh, done some other really cool stuff, and has been doing quite nicely. Obviously known for the, his um, fantastic macro. He's just very calm. He's very, uh, you know, just really good when he's playing. And one of his uh, key things that he has, the tr one of his tricks in his bag, is that he can actually um, defend against just about anything. I think we saw in uh, GSL a little while ago that. He actually defended against a very, very well-timed foregate uh, from one of his Protoss opponents that he played against. I can't exactly remember who, but obviously we're going to be continuing the tradition of Korean replays. I'm thinking I might be starting to do a lot more Korean replays on the channel these days. Uh, obviously I'll still be doing a lot of um, any sorts of C content that anyone wants me to pick up. Um, make sure if you have some replays yourself, send them through. And obviously I'll be doing some uh, some team games and guides. So that's sort of the direction in which this channel will be going for um, in future. So just so you guys know what the sort of what what the lowdown is. But um, anyway, back to the game. We've got uh, as we said a Zerg versus Zerg, and this is going to be very interesting because Promise is a very high level player himself, along with uh, Nesty. And we will see what particular strategies these guys pull out because you can do some very interesting things uh, in Zerg vs Zerg. It's still a very, uh, very evolving matchup, um, of course, to no pun intended. But um, the generally your plays, you sort of do see some very early lings. You can see very heavy lings. You can see switches into roaches, that sort of thing. And uh, it has been trending a little bit that you do sometimes see just um, both players expanding quite early. But one thing we will see here from Nesty is some very quick links. He's going to be sending these out straight away. I believe that was something around a 12. Was that a 12 or an 11 pull? I'm not exactly sure. I didn't actually see when that went down. But we'll see if Promise can actually hold this off. He does have a few of his own links on the way at the moment. He's only got four and he does have a queen on the way as well, but now there's a couple of extra in the production queue, so he's got a total of six, but we will have Nesty Zerglings coming inside here. We'll see if there is uh, any defensive capability here from Promise. He does surround some of those lings there, pick some of them off. Some of his own lings hatch. He is going to be able to deflect this attack, I think. There's no way that uh, these few lings left over from Nesty will be able to hold off uh, any, any sorts of defensive pressure, but what we did see there was um, something which I will go over in just a second. We'll just watch what these lings go after. And it looks as if he's uh, Promise is actually going to chase Nest T all the way back. He does know that he's got a slightly superior army just for the moment. Of course, as we can see, no extra Zerglings coming out from Nest T just yet. He does have two queens though. So that should be quite adequate to defend against these four lings that are just going to pop up here. And they're probably not going to go into the base there once they see those queens. Or maybe they are. They're a bit indecisive and it looks like Promise is going to attempt to get some scouting off running in here seeing that there's no second gas so there's probably not going to be any roaches or anything like that for the moment and just getting a good look at what is inside obviously seeing that there are two queens meaning that he can uh, he's not going to have as many zerglings and in that case Promise is going to expand so just back quickly on what I was mentioning here with the uh, with the early ling defense there the Probably the best thing you can do if you're getting Ling Rush like that, what you want to do is grab your drones like like I've got here and then click them up to this one of these top mineral patches and when your opponent's Zerglings are sweeping in through the side here, click down to the other side of the mineral patches like over here and then once you get all of your drones on top of your opponent's Zerglings, make them attack and then that should actually get you on top of your opponent's Zerglings, get all of your drones or your workers or your, you know, whatever, shooting at the, uh, at the actual opposing lings and you should be able to deflect it because generally that early sort of pool attack is it's designed to catch someone off guard if they if they're not ready or they're not actually concentrating properly that's when that'll catch someone off guard it's not as powerful up in the higher leagues as we just saw here from these sorts of players they, they can easily deflect that kind of attack here speaking of deflecting great little uh, jab there by promise to take out that drone that had come across to build the hatchery there for nest t the queen is going to wander around on uh off the creep and she's not going to have a good time with that because she is quite slow she needs to uh, get on the treadmill because I don't think she's ready for that kind of stuff just yet but Promise has got his own hatch up already this has already been done here whoa we got some more attacks going on here it looks as if 
promises are going to keep trying to poke away at this hatchery and he'll see if he can do much but I don't think there's anything else that he's going to get done now especially with the creep spreading some roaches have come out here for Nestine he's going to try and use them to defend for the moment the, keep in mind the only thing the promise has got going back at his own base are a few uh, drones that are just starting to saturate that natural expansion so the economy stakes let's have a quick look here as we can see promise way ahead in the actual economy stakes given that um, he has taken that early expansion there got a few drones up and running and a few banelings here ready to defend so promise is going to have quite a decent eco lead for the moment he's going to need to make sure he holds that in place for the moment just got to watch out of course for some of these uh, zerglings that are coming in from Nesty, but of course he'll be able to hold that off so Nesty obviously has uh, pretty much a, sort of an army advantage at the moment here he obviously does have some lings but they uh, some roaches sorry but they're not going to be do too much until they can get across the map which is the main problem for Nesty just now because if he moves in he won't be able to defend his base for the moment unless he puts some spine crawlers down so Nest T now starting to catch up in the income stakes as we can see here some drones have been transferred across he now is even on the harvesters he's got 32 in total so he's uh, certainly catching up there although we did see a bit of a jump there from promise he's going to have his own uh, drones powering through these minerals down here at the natural so very uh, very passive game for the moment a lot of the time in Zerg vs Zerg you do see some uh, baneling micro battles you see uh, just lots and lots of roach battles these days especially and uh, obviously when you get to the mid-game tech you start to see infestors which are really cool to see in Zerg vs Zerg. We previously did see them a little bit in Zerg vs Zerg uh, when it sort of gets to the, maybe the, the sort of 20-25 minute mark when you can actually get that sort of economy going to support infestors along with some uh, obviously some normal um, military units such as the Zerglings or the Roaches but it is um, quite effective now to get some uh, to get the infestors because they can provide you with um, you can do that sort of burrow attack where you actually run in and um, go for your opponent's mineral line with some infested terrans which pop out out of the ground with ground which is the most annoying thing ever or you can do some things with fungal growth of course and if your opponent's going very heavy roaches as we can see here whilst the roaches do have 145 life they do take the extra damage from fungal growth given that uh, the recent patch gave a little buff to the fungal growth which has certainly affected this matchup in a small way for the moment but um, as I said everything is still evolving in Zerg vs Zerg and probably one of the big things to keep an eye out for is uh, one of the new players which has started popping up which is his name is Spanish War I believe it's uh, it is and he's actually doing some very cool things with Zerg getting uh, no gas builds that sort of thing and uh, just seeing if he can adapt the metagame of Zerg vs Zerg in any way and uh, obviously of the other matchups as well he does the no gas builds for all of his plays but back to the game here we do see that the rocks were taken out by promise he's got a very very heavy roach force at the moment if we have a quick look at the army tab we do have it slightly up for IM Nest he's got 114 supply 113 now for promise he's going to catch out that one roach which is just a bit out of position but we do see that there's just a slight advantage in this current um, attack here for Nest he looks as if he's going to come in and try and take it, that advantage and see if he can do something with it. He's coming into the natural of promise here. It's going to get a bit crazy here. Let's check out what's going on. Roach is in a terrible, terrible position here for promise. Getting absolutely surrounded there. Beautiful concave from Nesty. That may even decide the game, but it's a bit hard to say here. Obviously, promise does have his, uh, his supporting roaches that can pop straight out here. And the drones even came along to try and help out. But it does look as if Nesty is still holding his, his really good concave on top of the units of promise. The promise is probably going to start to fight back around about now he's starting to bring back some of his units it does look quite even for the moment the drones are coming in to try and help out no they're not even helping out they're just coming inside to see if they can uh, grab some more minerals while their friends are taking shots but zergling starting to flood in here for nesty i think that may be it because the zerglings will put a lot of damage on these roaches down here and i think this may sort of even out there no promise actually comes back with that Beautiful, um, with that uh, defender's advantage, of course, with the being resupplied a lot faster than your opponent can get his own supply of units back in. And he just um, just barely holds off there. He does bring out a lot of roaches, which will help him in pushing back against Nest Team. We'll see if he can do so right now. He is moving up against the natural in ST. ST quite aware of this, of course, because in Zerg vs. Zerg, no moves are safe, because you can always see what your opponent is doing with the Overlord 
flock that's sort of flying over the map. We do see a tech to lair coming along from Nesty. A Zergling pops in just to see what Nesty has available to defend with, but there's still just a little bit too much, I think, and maybe because of that, once again, that defender's advantage will give Nesty just a slight upper hand if Promise was to push in here. Let's have a look at what the tech is up to now. We do not have any sort of um, extra lair tech on the way from Promise. He's, he's got it there, but he hasn't actually done anything with it just yet. He is grabbing his ex extra extractor at the natural, and there it is. We do see an infestation pit coming along from Promise. He's seeing if he can get that bonus up, as I said, with the uh, the bonus to fungal growth. It certainly helps out when you are defending against Roach Armies, and we'll see if he actually pulls that one out of the bag and if he tries to push with that. But we do have some spine crawlers coming up from Promise. Interesting to see that he is uh, putting some down there for his uh, static defense of the gold expansion. He's probably going to try and go for this one, and I think once Nesty sees that that gold expansion goes down, he's probably going to try and make some sort of attack here. We do see that the uh, plus two to missile attacks is on the way for Nesty, so if he gets that up and tries to push in, he may have a slight advantage, but actually if we have a quick look on the... Uh, on the production tab, we actually have plus two for Promise already on the way. Once again, that economy advantage that he had at the start, just proving a little bit of a, um, a powerful part to the game of Promise there when, when he took that early hatchery. And now we do see these spine crawlers repositioning themselves a little bit better. I was, I was sort of a bit wondering about this, this spine crawler that was sitting here that was a bit of an odd spot for it. But we will see if that comes into play at all. We do have a Roach just running in here just to see what is happening at the gold base. He does poke in there. Gets taken out himself, but he does know what he's defending there. There is one spine crawler, a lot of lings and a lot of roaches here ready to defend. I think that'll be enough to defend any attack by this particular roach ball that Nesty has prepared. And it looks as if Promise might try and go for some sort of uh, flanking attack along the side. We'll just have a look at exactly what his tech path is. He's got the pathogen glands for the infestors. There is one infestor out, so this could... The infestors can essentially provide the win if you are going to um, use them effectively they can be a huge bonus to your army so you just have to be really careful with your usage of the infestors and you can effectively win the game with some good fungals or with some uh, excellent infested terran play another thing uh, that you can do with the inf with the infestors is, is the uh is to shoot down some um or throw down chuck some eggs down i don't know we'll have to figure out some terminology for that but um when you put some infested uh, Terrans down on the ground, they obviously provide a little bit of a meat shield, and they do um, obviously some extra damage to your opponent's forces. Now we do have, coming down the side here is Nest. He's going to see if he can come in from the side. Spine Crawlers repositioning themselves, coming into the battle here of the Roaches and the Infestors. Beautiful fungal growth there by Promise. He's put them back on top of all of those Roaches there. This may provide a bit of an advantage, but once again, the Concave sort of favoring Nest here. We'll probably see that uh, Promise will actually win out, given that he does have, once again, the defender's advantage. But it looks as if that was just, once again, the uh, positioning there for Nesty was just absolutely fantastic. He does actually pull back now. A lot of these roaches are on low health there. We do see that Promise actually has quite a lot of uh, healthy roaches, but they are starting to go down now. And along with that gold base, and Promise is actually going to have a really good supply of forces to actually repel this attack, and he does so indeed right there. Now he is going to try and move across here, probably trying to catch some of these roaches out of position here. Taking out one of them, probably going to catch a couple more. One, two, three going down, and that will probably be it for the moment. He's going to try and come in here and counter, but it looks as if these roach battles are going crazy across the map. Another fungal growth going down. These four infestors proving their value here, providing a lot of damage, as we mentioned, with the buff to fungal growth giving the extra advantage there to Promise, and I think this may be be the beginning of the end for Nest T. He's uh, starting to lose his numbers there. As we can see on the unit tab, we do have 24 Roaches for Promise, and the four Infestors, as, as mentioned, along with a few more popping out, and down to a, a measly 14 for Nest T, and he's starting to lose some more here. Fungal Growth's pro providing more damage again. And there is just really no way for Nesty to start to come back from this. He's going to need to produce a lot of lings, perhaps, or something, just to provide some sort of flanking attack against Promise's forces. But there's there's nothing he can do. He's starting to lose out, getting, once again, flanked and some more fungal growth going down. GG from Nesty, and that is going to be it. So that was quite an interesting Zerg versus Zerg there from these two high-level players. Nesty uh, getting a little bit behind in the economy at the start of the game, which I think may have just proven that the part where he lost the game just due to the fact that he was quite far behind in his economy at the start, started losing, he did 
some uh, really good attacks here right at the start with his roaches but uh, just started to lose out once that the economy of promise started to kick in and the upgrades of course as well and as I mentioned many times there the fungal growth so great little game there from these two players hope you guys enjoyed that one if you're sort of um, in favor of seeing lots more uh, Korean replays that sort of thing if you want me to stick to that side of the table and uh, see of course as well Put, uh, put some comments down, let me know what you think. Of course, uh, thumbs up, uh, let your friends know to come and watch, and make sure you subscribe, of course, guys. Thanks. Cheers.